Hey there, Abiding Fam, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelsey Lee, for those of you who are new, and today we are going to do some journaling together. So I thought this time, instead of doing my typical journaling and then piecing it together and doing a voiceover after the fact, that I would just walk you through my process as I'm doing it in more of a chatty journal with me style. And this type of style isn't something I do too often here on my YouTube channel, but if you enjoy this video and like this style of chatting as I go, then definitely check out my Patreon if you want exclusive access to lots of chatty journal with me's. And do let me know down in the comments if you would like to see more chatty journal with me's here on my YouTube channel as well. But let's just dive in. So today we are going to be documenting March 6th, which was a Saturday. And on this particular Saturday, my husband and I went to see the snow geese migration at Middle Creek. This is something that we try to go to every year. It is something that happens not too far away from where we live. And it's a pretty amazing natural phenomenon where over 140,000, I think the peak record that they've ever had at Middle Creek was 170,000 snow geese flock towards this place. It's just basically a wildlife preserve called Middle Creek Wildlife Preserve. And they go there for whatever reason. They like it as a pit stop on their way back to the Arctic for the summer. And they always show up around late February, early March and we decided to go and see them. It does tend to draw pretty big crowds, especially people who enjoy birding and wildlife photography, which of course are two things that both of us really enjoy. So I just made a little collage showcasing some of the photos that I had taken. I just took my Canon G7. I didn't go crazy with my DSLR or anything because I knew that I would only really be using these photos for my journaling. I wasn't trying to get crazy with my photography, but I made a little collage of the photos that I had taken. And let me insert a clip right here of the snow geese. I want you to be able to see the video because while these photos do capture the number pretty well, it doesn't capture it quite as well as a video does. So I'm going to insert a clip or two right here to bring you into the experience a little bit more. So that's what I plan on putting into my journal, but I had this fun idea that maybe something extra I would do on this page is that I would make a little flip card to go on this page somewhere. I'm thinking maybe I'll put the photo up here and then put the flip card down here and basically that I would make a little see-through pocket card that flips up and then maybe I'll have the title of Snow Geese Migration or something like that underneath it. That's my idea. And actually the reason I came up with this idea is because my pillow, this is seems totally off topic, but I promise you it's going to connect. My pillow in our living room has been shedding these little white feathers lately. I don't know why they've been coming out of the pillow, but I have these little white feathers. And of course I saw them and went, Ooh, those would be fun to use in my journal. And so I've collected these little white feathers and lo and behold, they are absolutely perfect to use on the snow geese spread I'm about to create. So I had the idea that I could put these little white feathers that I've collected from my shedding pillow, gotta be resourceful guys, and put them into this clear plastic baggie by the way, this bag that I plan on using is what's called a memory protector. These ones are from Close to My Heart, but there are different brands. But essentially, it's kind of like a little photo sleeve that people would use in Project Life or in a scrapbook to add an extra photo. And I like to use these in my journals 
to basically add fun little tip-ins that are clear elements and I like to do shakers with these a lot. That's what I typically use them for. So that's what I'm going to create. I'm going to create a little shaker card tip-in thing with the little feathers and I'm going to use some chunky glitter I think as well. This is from Recollections. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Super pretty. So this is Recollections Chunky Glitter and it's basically that translucent... No, Jeannie. It's basically translucent glitter that when you move it in the light, it kind of has some pink and green hues that it plays off of. So I'm going to use that with the feathers in the shaker card. Now because I plan on using the glitter, I want to make sure that I have a really good seal on this, which there's a few ways that I typically seal my little shaker cards. One way would be to use tape runner on the inside and then use washi tape over that to close it. The other way is to actually fuse it together and for that I have this little fuse tool that basically heats up and then you can run this over it and this will glue the two pieces of plastic together. So that's what we're going to use today, but if you don't have a fuse tool you can still do this with just using some washi tape. And while I'm waiting for my fuse tool to heat up, I'm going to go ahead and trim the photo down and stick this onto the page a while. And I think I'm just going to put this right at the top. And I'll use my handy dandy Xyron Mega Runner. This is the Teresa Collins brand, but it's basically just a Xyron runner. And this is my preferred adhesive. I really like using tape runners. I very, very, very rarely use glue, only when I really have to because it's something that I just can't stick down with a tape runner do I break out my glue. So we're gonna stick this up here. And then, like I said, my thought is that I will put this here and then I think my journaling is gonna go on this side and then I'm thinking underneath the flip card, I want to put Snow Geese Migration. That or I'm going to put the flip card over my journaling. We'll see which one I go with. But for now, I want to do some stamping, I think, to write out the title of Snow Geese Migration. And I'm thinking as a background for the stamping to go on that I might play with my gelatos because I have the gelatos here I used with the stenciling on the Friday and if you're not familiar with my channel I like for the pages to semi match when possible so I think in this case I'm going to use the same gelatos to do the background. So I have here a Faber-Castell gelato. This is in the color elderberry, a super pretty kind of lilac-y color and that's the same one that I used over here. So basically the technique with using a gelato and a baby wipe is just to pick up the pigment on your baby wipe basically on your finger through the baby wipe I just rub it on and then I smush it and smear it around the page with my finger through the baby wipe and that way the little bit of water that's on the baby wipe will activate that pigment and get it moving around but it's not going to saturate your page like it would if you were using a watercolor brush or something like that so I'm just going to smear this on the page over here. And I might actually do it, I think I'm going to do it over the whole bottom. So that way I do my journaling over it as well. And what I'm trying to do is kind of replicate the sky that the birds, of course, were flying across that day. So we're just kind of making like a big cloud and can be really messy with this. You're basically just coloring with your finger. And I do think I'm going to bring in a little of this blue as well, just because the elderberry is so light. I'm just going to bring in a little bit of touches of the blue. The great thing about doing the baby wipe technique is that it also doesn't really require any dry time. I am going to zap it just because I plan on stamping over top of it, so I do want to make sure it's super dry. But if you just waited a minute, it probably would be plenty dry enough for you to start journaling. 
so there we go now it's dry and as you can see there is zero bleed through or shadowing through the back which is another reason I love using gelatos to add color to my journaling and so that you can see it up close there is the little background effect really really simple and subtle but it does add something to the page and I think even just doing this with a photo or just putting your date here at the top and then doing your journaling over the gelato in itself would be a really pretty journal page. But of course we're going to be a little bit extra here and I'm going to go ahead and do some stamping. So I'm going to do some stamping and I might actually do some embossing as well. Now I do know that because this is a pigment ink this can bleed through the particular journal that I use. So if I didn't want that to happen, I would probably do my stamping onto sticker paper and then put that down. But I actually don't really care because I think I'm going to put a photo over the spot where this would bleed through anyways. So you just want to keep that in mind. What do you plan on doing with the next side of the page before you go and use pigment ink? So I'm going to go ahead and write out snow with my Allie Brown alphas that I have here. And a trick I like to do is line up my stamp block over my dot grid paper and then use the dot grid to help guide how I'm placing the letters. So for example, I'm currently placing the letters on here one space apart according to the dot grid. Okay, so I think I'm just going to put this, let's just say right there, sit down well, it's a nice clean stamp, and then I am going to go a little extra, and I'm going to emboss this, I have clear embossing powder here, so all I do is while the stamp is still wet, I just put a little bit of the powder over top of the stamping, making sure that it gets on all of the stamp. And then I have this little blue tray that I can put the excess powder in. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tap that off oh no I did not mean to do that that was silly 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 let's quick wipe that off oh my gosh I'm making a rotten mess because I got my stamp on here, which is not what I wanted to do. Okay, well let's I'll worry about that in a second because I need to go ahead and dry this. So I did mess that up a little bit because I got overwhelmed by the fact that I just got stamp on my beautiful cover. Crisis semi-averted. I think that I got the line out for the most part. It's a little bit visible still, but not enough to bother me. So <laughs> let's return to our journal entry. So for the next word, I'm going to use these Echo Park designer stamps. And for this one, instead of spelling the whole word out because I'm repeating the same letter, so E happens three times in the word geese, I'm just going to do it one letter at a time and I'm going to close the stamp so that I do not do the same thing again. So there's a really nice G. I lost my E. Where is my E? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. 
And since I'm not writing the entire word out, in order to make sure that I have it evenly spaced, what I'm going to do is first do the first and last letter. So the last letter is E. So I'm just going to put that one down first with the same spacing as I have it from the snow here. So the G is one over from where the S ends. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the E. I'm gonna make it one over from where the W ends and try and make sure that I'm on the same line. So it looks like it's this dot here. So my next E is going to be the third letter. So I'm gonna put that right in the middle. And then my other E and my other S will go in the middle of the other spaces. And that will give me a nice even spacing. So we're gonna do one more E right in the middle between the G and the E. And then we just need our S and I'm gonna put that between the E and the last E. There we go, and that gives me a nice even spacing for the entire word. Okay, and then I'm gonna use these smaller letters to do the word migration. So now that I have done the snow geese migration and dried that, I think I'm going to put the date underneath it. So I'm just going to spell out March 6th. And then I'm going to emboss that too, just to make it make a little bit more sense why I embossed the word snow. Okay, so I'm going to put this right underneath. And then this excess that I have here in this pan, I'm gonna put that over these letters that I just did. And then again, we're just gonna tap the excess off the page into our little tray. And then we just use our heat tool to melt the powder. And then any excess, I just tap back into our little bottle here. So in a perfect world, I would have stamped migration over a little bit, and then it would have been centered with the words snow geese. But we don't live in a perfect world. And unfortunately, I didn't realize quite how smushed together the lettering would be with those style of stamps. So what I think I'm going to do is draw a few geese over here to balance out the fact that the migration is a little bit more left than I would like it to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw, I think, one or two or three little geese as if they're flying in the V formation. Okay, so I just added three little goose silhouettes to the page, and I think that was a really nice touch. And now let's move on to making that pocket I talked about. So here's my pocket, and I got my chunky glitter, and we have my little bird feathers that aren't really bird feathers, they're pillow feathers. And let's move my journal out of the way. And I'm gonna grab my little mat here so that we can use the heat tool. Um, this mat is from Eco Pico, and it's a really good sustainable mat brand. I really enjoy using these if you're in the market for a mat. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick my feathers into my little pocket. Now I might regret putting these feathers in first. I might have wanted to put in the glitter first. We'll see what the glitter does when I put that in. So I'm gonna put some glitter in here. I think that's a good amount. I'm gonna go too crazy. 
but I think that's really a good amount. Always recap your glitter. Number one rule of crafting, never leave your glitter uncapped. <laughs> so now that I've done that, we can seal this up. So super easy, right? So what we do for that is I have this little guide that will help me get it in the right place. So I like to line it up over a line so that I can more easily see it. And then I'll place my little guide down over that line and then we'll push it through. And then that'll give us a nice straight line and hopefully seal us up here. And then just to be safe, I usually like to do it on the opposite side as well. So I flip it over and then run it over the seam again. There we go. And voila. So as you can see, we basically just created another seam here across the top, pretty much the same as what you have on the sides. And then that just glues it together. And now we have a little shaker card with the glitter and the feathers inside and it's all movable and it kind of looks like the birds flying through the sky. So that is so fun. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to put this in. I think this is going to look great. And as you can see, it has a little white strip across the top. And then when I peel this back, that actually is sticky. So I can put this right onto the page. But before I do that, I'm going to add in my journaling. I'm going to fast forward me adding my journaling and then we'll decide if I want to put this over the journaling or if I want to put it over the title. So I just added the journaling and while I thought that I was going to want to put this over the journaling, I actually started the journaling too high and I think it's also weird for the journaling to be peeking out from under it. So I actually think it's going to make more sense for me to put it over the title, which also looks really, really good. So I'm going to take off the little strip here and just get that nice and shaken around. Move those feathers. And I'm going to stick it, try and get it nice and centered. There we go. And then you flip it up and you have snow geese migration March 6th underneath of it. So there you go fam, that is the finished entry. I really hope that you enjoyed this more chatty style of a journal with me. For me they're really fun because they feel more like a live stream and I hope that you enjoyed it. So do leave me a comment down below letting me know if you enjoy this style of journal with me and if so I will try to do more in the future. And if you want access, like I said at the beginning of this video, to more chatty journal with me's or just exclusive videos in general, definitely check out my Patreon page. I post an exclusive video there every month and there's a whole backlog catalog of exclusive videos there for you to watch the moment you join. So definitely check that out. The link is in my description box. And when you join, you also get access to free printables and lots of other goodies. You can learn more about it at patreon.com slash abiding Kelsey Lee. And most of all, it is the best way to further support my channel. So thank you so much to all of my patrons who make this possible. And thank you just for being a part of this community and watching my videos. Please do subscribe if you're not already and join the Abiding Fam and I hope that you'll give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment letting me know if you enjoyed this style of video and let me know too if there were any new techniques or tips that you gained from watching this video. And as I'm wrapping up here, I'm going to show you some close-up photos of this spread we just created. I really hope that you enjoyed doing this process with me. And I hope that I will see you in future videos as well. If you are newer to my channel, know that there is a whole playlist full of Journal With Me's here on my channel that you can watch and enjoy, as well as my newest playlist featuring all of the entries I'm creating this year, which I'll put up in the cards for you. This is My Abiding Journal 2021, otherwise known as my daily journal. And if you want to learn more about that, I have a playlist here on my channel that has the video where I introduce my abiding journal as well as the chatty flip throughs of each month that I'm doing. So I'll put that in the cards as well for you to go 
and watch and check out after you're done this video. Hopefully that explains a little bit more what it is I'm doing here in my journal and my hope is that it would inspire you to join in the fun as well and document your own life. If you want to join us in my Abiding Journal 2021, you can join us just by documenting your own journaling process and journey on Instagram using the hashtag MyAbidingJournal2021 or joining our Facebook group, which is linked in the description box as well. Ultimately, that is the whole reason for this channel, for creating these tutorials and videos is to create community. And so I would really encourage and invite you to really be a part of the community by joining us in other arenas and really participating by commenting and engaging with others. So with all that said, friends, I look forward to seeing you in the next one and hanging out with you even more in this community. Until then, keep exploring your abiding creativity and document a life abiding in faith, hope, and love.